Hi, I'm Linda Nelson with Ancient Earth Pigments in Santa Barbara, California. We specialize in natural and handmade dry art pigments. AEP was founded by Bijo and John Trimble for the education of historical painting techniques. We're expanding the store with more colors and special tools so you can make watercolors, gouache, pastels, egg tempera, oils, even fresco. Check our blog for technique demos and subscribe for alerts and sales online at www.ancientearthpigments.com. I also organize art workshops in Santa Barbara with popular artists with my parent company, Atelier Nelson, LLC. Our small family-run company appreciates your business. Thank you. We have some great tools here to show you and pigments. I think you're going to have a lot of fun seeing this stuff. So, here we have Egyptian frit. This is the Egyptian blue that's been known to the pharaohs for 3,000 years. Here we have smalt, which is also a glass, a blue glass pigment, which is very hard to find. Not very many companies have this. Also, cobalt blue which is one of the standards by which all oil painters and watercolors, colorists, that's, that's a standard blue that everybody will use. And this, this is ultramarine. This is a synthetic man-made ultramarine. Now, the fun thing is that we went to Italy last year, and I was lucky, very fortunate, to find Zecchi art materials in Florence. Being the, the paint nerd that I am, I had to have some actual lapis lazuli. This is the real stuff. This is number one grade. And I just wanted to show you that the man-made pigments are really, really close. So take a look at this. Take a look at that color match right there. So if you don't want to pay the outrageous price for a true lapis lazuli, which I do have, you can have ultramarine and it's going to give you the same value of blue, that same rich blue that was known to Fra Angelico, to the, the ancient, the medieval and ancient artists who did Mary's robe in ultramarine or the sky over Mary's head. So these are a couple of the colors that I really, really like. I got myself a reference set of color so that I could see what was the true color known to the medieval artists, the Renaissance artists, and to modern day. So when we say that we've, we've been bringing in new colors, that's what we're talking about. We have brought in a bunch of colors that will really add to your, your palette. And if you want to specialize in certain colors, that's outstanding because It'll take a little while. Right now with COVID, um, the shipping is delayed, customs is delayed. It ta can take a while. So we'll do our best to fill your order as soon as we can. But some of the other tools we have are uh, two sizes of mortar and pestle for grinding your pigments and dispersing it into your binder. We also have the mullers. These two, oh, actually all three of them come from Zecchi. These two are handmade Italian crystal by uh, Florentine artisans. If you happen to know Cesar Santos, this is the very same muller that he's using when he's grinding pigments, and he did his demo in May of this year. We also have gold shell, shell gold and gold leaf, and we have the burnishing tools to go with it. Also, we have sets that we've put together for people to enjoy. A sample of colors that would have been appropriate to, this is for the Renaissance set. Let me show you what's inside here. We have a full palette of colors that would be perfect for the Renaissance period. We have the scarlet red, we have the, excuse me, this is cobalt blue, and this one I believe is smalt. Okay, so you get a little sampler of the smalt there. Pop this back in the box. This set is the Asian set. So if you like Asian art and you want to get those colors that would have been prevalent, here we have a beautiful, beautiful orange. This is an apricot that you would see in embroideries and on silk fa painted fabrics. 
got a bright yellow, that same uh, scarlet, and then we have indigo. Indigo is actually a dye. There's a couple extra steps you'd need in order to use that in a painting, but it's still a beautiful saturated dark blue. Lastly, for people who are doing portrait work, this is a black mirror. What you do with a black mirror is, let's say, you have a model over there, and you're worried that the proportions of your painting have gone off. Something's not quite right. So the model's there, your painting is on an easel. You turn your back to your painting, and you hold the mirror up so you can see both the model and your painting, and you go, ah, the negative space around my model is wrong, or her neck is too long, or I have not put the shadows in the right place. You can end up with a much stronger painting by using a black mirror. You could also use your cell phone, but if you drop it, that's a big mistake. Anyway, thank you very much, and we will show you some of the demos in a minute. Hey there, this is Linda Nelson from Ancient Earth Pigments. Today, we are mixing two, maybe three colors in dry art pigments. I'm going to start with, uh, let's say, okay, we're going to go with Cinebreeze Rosa. This color has been known to the Italians for centuries. They've used this in frescoes, in the Sistine Chapel, uh, basically anywhere where a basis for a skin tone is needed. So through the Italian medieval and Renaissance ages, we're, we're going to start with chalk white. That For our inventory, that would be P-A-W-0-1. You'll see I'm wearing protective equipment, a mask and gloves. And you always want to protect yourself whenever working in, in a dusty situation. There we go. Make sure it fits well. And we make sure we have a clean spoon. Here's chalk white. And I'm looking at two reds here. I'm going to go with scarlet. Scarlet is our safer alternative to vermilion red and cadmium red medium. That's inventory number PAR11. It's a very powerful tinting red, so I just need a little bit here. I'm going to keep my spoon separate. And always, always cap your jars. Yep, you do not want to spill these. Here we go. And I'm trying to thoroughly mix. Need a little bit more white. Here we go. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. It's good, but it's a little on the sweet side. I need to warm this up. So let me look through here. Yeah, I like this one. This is Golden Sienna. It's a warm, earthy sienna. It's number PAE08. Get a fresh spoon, because I don't want to be contaminating my other colors. Here we go on the color wheel. We're a little bit too close to purple. I want to take it warmer up there on the color wheel. A little bit more. That's good. That's pretty good. Now I want to use Verona Green to neutralize because I went a little bit too orange. A little bit more white. That's good. That's looking very good. But, let me see, I want to bring it up in value 
and warm it again. So I'm choosing yellow ochre light. This is number PAY04. And here we go. Two values that I've mixed and the original on the right. I can keep this stored in my studio and depending on which medium I'm using and how I want this to match the complexion, I can tint it another direction or use a different binder. Hey there, this is Linda Nelson back with you again doing another color mixing demo. This is my favorite blue. I use it in many of my ocean themed paintings. It may have come to me from Glenna Hartman, a noted local artist. I love this color, but darn it, I just can't find out where it came from. I want that color, so I'm going to have to mix it. I'm going to start out here with a clean mortar and pestle. And then I want to use chalk whiting, inventory number PAW01. I'll use a generous amount here. Next, I'm looking at Prussian blue, number PAB09, or ultramarine, PAB13. Looking at that blue, I'm going to start out with the medium value of ultramarine, and I will use a clean spoon and put in a generous amount. Always cap your jars so to not have an accident. Next, this is Prussian blue. How, look how deep that is. Look how intense that is. This is a first modern artificially manufactured color made by the color maker Diesbach of Berlin in about 1704. And here we go. That's looking good. It's looking good, but it's a little too blue. I need to add some green. I'm going to go with this one. This one is Genuine Nicosia Green, number PAG09. Looks pretty good. Little bit more Prussian. Now, I have a choice between two greens. I am going to choose jadeite. I love jadeite, and it'll be a great neutralizer, and lift the value. Lift the value of this blue. This is number PAG03. Once again, I use a clean spoon because I don't want to cross-contaminate my other jars of color. And I'll give it a really generous amount here. capping my jar. This is a bit sticky. This is a bit sticky, so I'm going to have to scrape the sides down. And here we go. Here is my signature ocean blue next to the original stick. Hey, thank you for visiting. Come visit us at www.ancientearthpigments.com to see the rest of the color mixing demo. Thank you. Bye-bye.